Welcome YouTube to my support power ranking breakdown. If you guys haven't already, I have done a LCS video breaking down all of the teams and where I think they sit. I will leave a description. I will leave a link for those in the description below. Uh, and always, you know, like and subscribe to the channel. And with this, um, I created a six uh, a six color code system uh, to just kind of give you know my opinions on where I think everyone stands and what are my requirements for them. So uh, with blue, uh, the blue area, these are characters or players uh, who are considered the best of the best these are superstars um, these players perform at the highest level in their role consistently possibly have won split titles or MVPs or runner-up in either or perform well under pressure or have has performed well under pressure uh, green would be the all-stars these are strong players they are playing for playoff teams or you know title contenders uh, these teams focus players around strong picks and map rotations to put these players in playmaking positions so that means that the team uh, purposely picks champions or you know uh, um, uh, last picks for this player that way he can get a counter matchup or they play around this player's particular you know lane uh, yellow are solid um, solid pieces these players are you know have been or could be considered all-star level um, these are strong pieces to have on a team but they will not carry your season so you can't have a whole team of strong pieces you're, you're gonna kind of end up in the you know six to eight you know slot um so these players can see improvement whether it's on or off the rift uh with orange these are players who i consider placeholders so um average wise they maybe have fallen from grace or not you know performing as well maybe they have injuries which is stopping them from playing well or playing at all or they're having coaching issues which you know for us it's we don't know as much as you know they would uh, a lot of teams will keep that stuff under wraps but we can you know piece it out from you know talking and to certain people are watching certain uh certain interviews they, they also could be young talent that haven't proven themselves yet so if they're on a really really bad team it's kind of hard to you know you know gauge how well they're going to play if they've always been on that same team that's always been bad you have uh purple which is uh this is kind of a, an x-factor role known as the hidden potential players so these players could be all-star level they also could be placeholders um they have a lot of hype around them, whether it's because they're coming from a different region, whether they're coming from a different team, or whether they're a rookie coming in from Academy who has a lot of hype around them. These players are supposed to come in and make an instant change to that team's, you know, culture, winning culture, um, you know, positivity, all that other kind of stuff. So they have a lot of, you know, stress on their shoulders, which could be a good and a bad thing. And then you have red, which are struggling players. So these players who are not performing well, either on the rift or off the rift, uh, possibly uncoachable. Uh, team should look to find replacements for these players now i don't generally put a lot of players in this role uh, for the past you know i've done this 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 type of video uh different variation of it but the ranking system like twice um and i've never put somebody generally don't put them in this the bottom tier role unless they absolutely deserve it uh just because i know most of the, i mean all of these players are better than you know the average so can't say that someone is struggling you know technically so um, so what I did, we have the supports and we have, you know, uh, core JJ, Zazel, Akuo, JJ, Aphromoo, Smoothie, Big and Gate. I put on the same line since they're playing for the same team. Biofrost, Ole, Vulcan, and Witted since he will be coming over from LEC. So we will start, uh, we'll start with Vulcan. Uh, so Vulcan to me is a placeholder as well as Big and Gate. Reason being, both of these teams are going through turmoil. Um, both of these teams are going to be more likely being uh, bought out. Optic, if you watch my power ranking video of the teams, you can listen to my Optic rant. Basically, they're going to be getting bought out. More than likely, uh, it's not official yet, by, but by Immortals. Uh, so Immortals will be taking over that spot, whether it's still Acting Gaming or some different name um, that's not Immortals and vulcan plays for cg or clutch gaming and i believe they're getting bought out by dignitas which is awesome because i really want to see dignitas <laughs> um but, but both of these teams are not for one but both of them have really egotistical ad carries uh vulcan doesn't have it anymore but he was playing with piglet so yeah piglet's definitely you know this egotistical diva and arrow seems very egotistical but he also doesn't seem like he cares a lot um for like the team dynamic here and 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 i i could see i can definitely see arrow being transferred back to korea or just not playing at all anymore 
Um, but I, I actually feel like Big, more so than Gate, has a lot of potential. Uh, and Vulcan, I think, has a decent amount of potential. But it's hard to kind of tell with the teams that they have. So hopefully, if uh, you know, if C, if if, Cl if Clutch Gaming does perform, you know, decent this split, uh, I'll have a more of a power ranking for it next split. Just to give just to give some more insight on um, his play. But for what he did last year, it's okay. Uh, big performed decent, but both of them, you know, not making playoffs. It's hard to say. Um, we'll do Witted. Uh, so Witted for me is in the hidden potential area. And I say this because, you know, although he's, you know, performed well over in the, uh, over in the LEC, he's coming to a brand new team, different dynamic, and more than likely will be starting. Um, so, which we haven't got confirmation on who's starting, I believe, yet. Um, look here. Yeah, I don't think we've gotten confirmation on who's going to be starting yet. But we can kind of make an educated guess and say that Witted is going to be starting. Considering they spent all this money to trade for Witted, they're not going to just do that and put him on the bench if they think JJ's going to be the starter. Uh, which I, th I think is a little sad because to me, uh, JJ is in the all-star ranking. Um, I think all I think he is an all-star. Um, I think he can be an all-star. I know, I know he wasn't last year, but I think if he was, if he was to start for this FlyQuest team, I think he could become that all-star level support and i hope they give him the opportunity to do it but it doesn't look like they're going to sadly um ole hmm ole to me is a superstar however i'm gonna put him in this area right here so he's kind of in between and i say this because we saw a different Ole last split than we've seen from him in Team Liquid. And the reason why, I believe the atmosphere, mainly in the bot lane, is much, much less toxic. Um, I can imagine playing with double lift is very, very strenuous for somebody who, you know, has come out and opened and been, you know, open with his, you know, anxiety and his crippling anxiety that he goes through, which, you know, I feel for him. Uh, that's why he didn't play Rift Rivals last, um, last year, uh, was because he was struggling with, you know, from what we, from what I could see, I guess uh, he was struggling with, you know, uh, underperforming and probably taking most of the blame from Double Lift. Um, definitely's not that, and it doesn't, it doesn't look like that team is anything like the the atmosphere that it was on that Team Liquid team. It seems it's very very positive. That's good because it seems to you know they're you know they're moving in the right direction, uh, making playoffs last year, or yeah, making playoffs last year. So. Um, I think it's, I think it's good. I think he is one of the top four supports to me in the league. Um, I think it just really depends on, you know, Ole's biggest thing to overcome is Ole himself. So, um, Biofrost and Hakuo, I believe go in the, um, strong piece area. This, you know, this, they are solid players. Um, I don't think either one of these two are leaders. Actually, for Hakuo, I put Hakuo, like, right here. Um, I think Hakuo has a lot of potential. I think he's been locked into this Apollo bot lane for so long that we just kind of look at him and go, okay, he's going to do, you know, what he normally does. And I think he needs to get away from playing with Apollo to recognize his full potential, his possible, you know, uh, potential, which could be, like, all-star level. Um, which I think is going to happen next year. I think Echo Fox being another team that's going to make a lot of changes, uh, both in the organization and on the team. Um, I think Hakuo is going to be one of those changes, whether it's you know Apollo getting removed or Hakuo going somewhere else. Uh, Biofrost, I don't feel, has accepted that leader role that he was supposed to when he came to this uh, CLG team. And if you watch my uh, power ranking video, I talk about it. I don't believe C you know CLG suffering from an identity crisis. They don't know what type of team they want to be, and uh, hopefully they start to figure it out because this team has a lot of talent, Biofrost included, and they could end up making playoffs and being a very very good contender for a while with this solid team that they have. But a lot of it comes down to leadership, and they don't have a leader right now. But uh, you know, Power Vivable is not really. He's more of a I'm gonna lead by carrying you, not lead by telling you what to do. Uh, Stick say, we haven't seen it work with Stick say. Uh, Ruin being, you know, a Korean speaking top laner, probably not gonna come in and do that. Uh, I don't know how well his English is, um, but he is the only Korean speaking player on the team, so we'll have to see. 
And then uh, Witted, uh, not Witted, um, Wiggly is a rookie, so I don't expect Wiggly to come in and be that voice of reason. So it kind of falls on Biofrost, and as a support, that's kind of what they're supposed to do is be the in-game leader. It's very, because uh, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're roaming around with your mid laner, you're roaming around with your jungler, you're trying to win the 2v2. Um, so you're doing most of the warding and, you know, you know, controlling the map vision. So it kind of falls on him, so hopefully he picks that up. Um, I think he can be um, kind of where Hakuo is, but for now, he's going to be a solid piece. Um, smoothie. And Zazel, I feel, both fall into this all-star role. I think JJ is kind of like right here, uh, mainly because we don't know where he, if he's going to be starting or not. Um, Smoothie and Zazel are both all-stars in my opinion. I think Smoothie is a little bit better than Zazel. Um, I think Smoothie has a little more experience and... This goes into the uh, TSM Cloud9 conversation, which is who's going to perform better in, in, you know, internationally if they both get sent to Worlds? Who's going to perform better? And I think right now, I think TSM holds most of those cards. I think Smoothie is a much much more experienced. Um, he has played at Worlds. And I think with his team having way more experience, I think it's going to you know, catapult the team. Um, Zazel also you know, went to Worlds, so um it's 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 tricky but I, d I definitely think smoothie is a little bit better but they both are all-star level sports uh we already have ole and then aframu and this is kind of actually where i wish i could just put core jj way up here but uh core jj is there and aframu would be like right here um aframu you know being on a 10th place team last year but he did win you know mvp two splits ago and i think with bang um, having the roster changes that they've made, I think this is going to be a great split for Aphromoo, possibly another, you know, MVP caliber uh, split. But then Core JJ being the master of all supports, um, downright just better than everybody. Uh, best uh, from what you can you can hear from those from the mic out or like the, their mic up uh, um, conversations that they have where they kind of show off um, in-game comms. Uh, Ole, uh, not Ole. Uh, Core JJ is a phenomenal. Um, Shot caller just very, very aggressive support too, which it works well with double lift and it kind of he can probably is one of the only supports who can tell double lift kind of what he needs to do. Because his double lift's gonna listen. He's like, hey, you you've won a world championship. I'm gonna listen to you. So that is my rank for the supports. Uh, make sure you go check out my other four videos that I posted for uh, the jungler, top lane, mid, and AD carry so you guys can figure out, you know, where I rank everybody else. And let me know what you guys think of my ranking system. Let me know what you know where you think i messed up where i you think certain players should be and let me know i always like to talk about that kind of stuff so i will see you guys in the next video peace